Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about parachute for spacecrafts. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what the heck we are talking about. We are talking about a structure that uses air for work, for useful work. Now, what is the main selling point is why the heck we want to use parachute rather than rocket is basically allows a maximum drag for minimum weight. There are other systems that can allow you to have a lot of drag, but problem is none of them comes to like drag to weight ratio so that's why we use parachutes now atmosphere is a thick medium like again our atmosphere but technically we call it from 100 kilometer and below but again it's a thick boy uh, what does that translate to that translate to that whole area becomes an area where you can dump your energy so you put a lot of energy in order to get to orbit but yes the energy cannot be created nor destroyed so you have to reduce that uh, reduce or remove that energy in order to land so doing so utilizing atmosphere itself helps you it's like yeah rather than firing retro rockets you can use the uh, you know atmosphere itself to slow you down heat shield does that that's the primary objective of a heat shield but again it can only slow down you from let's say 28,000 kilometer per hour to around let's say 2,000 kilometer per hour still very unsafe so we have to utilize uh, parachutes after that point and it can slow down from hypersonic like upper hi hypersonic not like you know 20 uh, mark 20 or something like that upper hypersonic is like 2000 km per hour plus but that's also pushing it that's like you know uh, cutting edge icbm parachute designs and all that jazz yes some parachutes are used in icbm for uh, evasion and all that jazz so and it allows to come from that kind of high speed from like you know above 1000 km per hour to land safely that's the whole point you can design something that can take reduce that speed so what is the logic behind it when well, we utilize flexible material because here's the deal when you are fighting against atmosphere the rigidity is your worst enemy you have to flex with it heck if you watch into a jumbo jet and they, when they are landing you, you can literally see their wings flexing you want to be flexible with the you know wind when you are dealing with it and when you are talking about something the moving at like supersonic speeds you really need to be flexible so that's why the most flexible materials are selected design is directly made for loads now this is one thing you may think hey why not put the biggest out there here's the deal let's assume you are dealing with apollo engineers and they're like okay we have to make a, a parachute with redundancy of course you will design in such a way let's say you have to have three parachute and if one of them fails you should be safe heck you will design in such a way that even if the second one also fails first one will at least give uh, astronaut a chance of survival yes they will be injured but there will be a chance of survival you will design in such a way but what happens if you overbuilt it let's say you took the one and diameter came out to like, let's say 10 meter diameter you're like let's make it 12 Here's the problem with that if you did that the time from like you know your high altitude to lower uh, you know landing will increase so it will go let's say from three minutes from when you are up deploying your main shoot three minutes uh, it may go as high as 11 minutes now what will happen uh, you know that is bad in that time is the, you can drift off course so your uh, literally your search party has to cut uh, such a very large area and you could like you can uh, try to land on india you may end up in pakistan that could literally happen if you are falling from that height for that long so and not to mention atmosphere also starts to control you more if you have a certain kind of speed there is certain inertia into you so little bit of wind will not do too much to you but if you have very large surface area little bit of wind speed is yeah 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 supposed to land in new zealand and ended up landing somewhere else that could happen that's why parachutes have to be precisely uh, you know sized you can not just go yolo on it now what kind of materials uh, we utilize in order to make them generally we use nylons then you go one step up generally even steels are also used for the cable uh, sometimes they are steel braided or sometimes actual steel is used so you have nylon generally nowadays then you have one step above kevlar and then you have one step above that that is xylon xylon is a bigger brother of kevlar it's much better uh, compared to kevlar in almost every way except longevity basically if you build the parachute you have to use that parachute like you know in one or uh, one or five years you can not keep that oh i built the parachute keep it for 50 years yeah after 50 years it will self degrade so that's why we don't see uh, armor uh, made out of that like people did made armors out of that problem was it became defective after like you know five years it was like you know bullets can directly go through so that's why again if spacex is using xylon so they have to make sure from manufacturing to uh, deployment they have to make sure that time is correct they cannot be like okay we manufactured in 2020 and then like you know kept it in shelf for 2030 yeah at that point it's useless but if you can get it in within uh, degradation period this puppy is awesome so that's the logic behind it now one thing you have to understand this, this is applies to almost it's a universal law so to say right tool for the right job because there is no magic parachute you cannot design a parachute that works well on mars and works well on earth you flat out cannot do that so big ones generally the big huge 
humongous parasols that we see they are generally good for slow speed so basically if you are talking about from around 500 km per hour to uh, around let's say zero so that's the range that's like big parachute i got this the moment you up deploy that kind of big parachute on sonic speed basically a uh, thousand kilometer plus that parachute is like see you done it can't do anything it will literally tear apart or it will tear apart your uh, capsule so to say so we generally utilize small ones for high speed so if you are have to let's say your heat should reduce most of your energy again you still are talking about like you know around 2000 km per hour so if you have to slow down from that speed like from 2000 to 500 at that point small parachutes are your best friend so we design different parachutes for different needs that's why whenever you see any sequence of uh, like you know parachute launches they're like okay tiny ones even smaller tiny ones then some big ones but there is a reason for that like the right tool for the right job and parachutes are generally classified in three main category main parachute that's supposed to take you from 500 to safe landing and then you have drag uh, drogue shoots drogue shoots are generally for stability basically they will be deployed as early as possible and they will be like okay okay let's stop the tumbling let's give a directionality to it basically they are stabilizers they are fancy stabilizers generally they are made of uh, kevlar because they have to go through a lot of heating so you have a dro drogue parachute for stability then you uh, once you have done that like once the capsule is like i got this i'm stable i'm okay i'm cool then you cut them then you send pilot parachutes the pilot parachute is the uh, main job is to pull the big parachute on because again these things can be huge so to make sure that you you don't tear apart the huge one while deploying it we generally use a soft deploy to have that soft to deploy we utilize pilot shoots you can understand that's why we have right tool for the right job so uh, what about the deployment? Now deployment you have to understand in this way, uh, we generally use explosive motors. Yes, that motor that is used by military basically that pipe you're like, ding, boom, that thing is used. The reason for that is basically parachute has to be deployed in a window. When you're coming from upper atmosphere to lower atmosphere, you have a fixed window. You cannot be like, yeah, I'm gonna you know, deploy a parachute. It movie gave us a very weird perspective where like people are deploying parachute few meters above the surface. Yeah, you did. You did. You do that. You did. So to make sure that astronaut don't become dead, uh, people ha generally have to time it out with enough buffer so there is a window. If you deploy parachute at this speed at this time, you're good. If you delay that time, within of course there is a margin. So like let's say a window would be for drogue shoot, there would be a window of like 10 seconds. You must deploy in that 10 second, and the computer will be programmed. The moment it enters, it's like try to uh, deploy the sequence to make sure that happens. Motor is the best solution. Why? Because it's so energetic that you will not have a scenario where it's like okay, it failed to deploy. That will not happen. It's a, it's a big, a big enough boom event. So it's like yeah, it will happen. You don't have to worry. And there is another aspect of because you are dumping so much energy into it. You are something that is compact. Generally, parachute are packed inside the capsule. Uh, you're ejecting that capsule it throws it far why that's an important thing well there is dirty air around every craft it does not matter if it's a jet engine or uh, like you know uh, shuttle or something you take a you make a sphere around it it's dirty there is a lot of turbulent air around it you don't want to deploy parachute in dirty air so we, when you throw it out there is a cable uh, that is dra gonna drag the system now that cable is specifically length in such a way that you're like okay now you are dealing with clean smooth air so that uh, motor helps in that also. That's why it's like so powerful. It's like it's gonna throw that away. So you gonna have a deployment and it's gonna work. Like and it's gonna work in clean air. So parachute will have the chance of actually working, dip opening up because you may open the parachute and it's like let's say it was uh, tangled in uh, dirty air. Yeah, you you stuck. You missed your window. So to make sure motors are used. Now drogue parachutes are generally the first thing that will like that will be deployed and it will provide stability. It's like whoa whoa whoa, calm down. If it's tumbling, it will stretch. Uh, that's why generally there are only two and they're fired in such a angle way that's like it's it's like handling it or you want to apply some brakes to that that's the first thing and it uh, handles from hypersonic slowers basically uh, 2000 kmph you're like okay calm down baby calm down you're gonna uh, depending on design it could come down to around uh, less than thousand so you have drogue parachute then drogue parachutes are generally cut now to cut them because you are dealing with something cable that is strong enough to handle that kind of speed you can't actually cut them properly so they generally have explosive bolts so there is a steel plate there is an anvil kind of a, like cutter and there is a big uh, piston with uh, actual explosives it's good boom it cuts it it's very interesting how the heck is it you have to cut them and again that can also be used in some other emergency scenario where parachute have failed and you have a backup 
So you have to remove the tangled uh, parachutes if it failed. So drop parachutes uh, provide stability, decel from hypersonic speed. Then once it's done, once you have cut up the parachute, it's like, okay, go away. Then you deploy pilot parachute. These are very tiny ones. They look very cute. Their whole job is to smoothly pull out the huge ones. The, these parachutes are huge. So the, it has to be done gently. So once you do that, there is another break built into these parachutes itself, which is called rifting, uh, riffing basically. So this is kind of a very thread, uh, clever thread engineering. So if you notice any video, they will always look like, hey, why it's opening so slowly? Because your instinct will say you uh, uh, drop something like that, like you take a plastic band, drop it with a heavy weight, it goes boom, it inflates very quickly. That will happen with these parachutes also. That's the, that's the logic of it. But here's the, if that happens, the not to mention if there is a serious risk, it might fall apart. If it does not fall apart, it will end astronauts inside there because of the G-shock. To make sure that does not happen, there is a rifting. That rifting is like, okay, 10% inflated, then it waits for some stress, tension to build up. Once the tension is there, 20%, 30%. It like, it stages, like that's why it's so smooth, so gentle. When you play the video, like you're like, whoa, it's slowly inflated. It's done very deliberately for that exact reason. So there is no instant shock, you don't want to do that. So pyro cutters are generally there for in case if a parachute fails, you have to disconnect them because if they end up tangling with other parachute, so you only need one parachute to do okay-ish landing, two, you good, three, awesome. But if let's say one fails, and they might have to disconnect it. So there is a pyro technique cutter built into the system. So that's how just you're gonna deploy this damn system. So what we can expect in the future? Better materials, obviously and design again design wise as we are going this is one of those technology where our CAD modeling has not cat, uh, caught up to the scenario because you cannot simulate so, so many threats properly and not to mention atmosphere is ludicrously dynamic itself so we have to do old school testing for most of it like computer simulation is like you know it gets us into the ballpark but we have, once we have to finally design it we have to test it that's why parachute development is so slow it's like it takes actual rocket launch to actually test the damn thing I have provided video down below, you can see that out. So we're gonna work on that. Now, right now you have to understand, you may think like we humans have been doing this for like, you know, 1969 and uh, we are good, we are solid on that, but here's the deal, no. Parachutes like still have very high failure rate. And if anybody of you are following like you know space news recently, you must have noticed like space has a lot of issue with their parachute. Uh, Boeing they tried a final test and one of their parachute failed. And it happens from Apollo mission also in uh, one of Apollo 15, I think. Uh, the landing, uh, one of the parachute failed. Again, the system was designed in such a way that it could handle uh, one failure, but it failed. So parachute does not have a kind of record where it's like, dude, I fire it, it is gonna work. It does not have that kind of guaranteed reliability. So people are trying to ditch it for human system that's why uh, spacex new system generally going for engine only because even in Ma uh, mars scenario imagine it this way you still have to build a sky crane sky crane is running on rocket so why the hell once you have the heat shield you're still gonna need the heat shield to you know slow down from 20,000 kilometer to let's say 2000 but rather than like you know having a, a parachute that can only slow you down from let's say 2000 to uh, 500 why not remove that stage, have a bigger, uh, you know, uh, bigger rocket crane stage and that itself will do the zero, uh, you know, velocity. Simplicity, reducing the part count is simple. So that's why there's a very serious chance that in future, once we have actual reusable rocket by ma multiple manufacturers, parachute will simply disappear simply because it's it's not that stable and we have been developing it. It's not like, you know, it's not a military, uh, you know, it's just a technology that's developed by, you know, NASA and all that. There are many companies pouring, our, uh, you know, their sweat and uh, tears into this and still, this will be still uh, very tricky, so to say. So there is a very good chance that in future we may just forgot that spacecraft used to use parachute to return to Earth. So this was my presentation on Parachute. I hope you liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.